Welcome back to Connecticut Newsmakers, everybody. You know about those town hall meetings that have been taking place in Connecticut and really all across the country in opposition to the administration's uh, position on health care reform. And uh, two of the groups that have been uh, very active in uh, lining up uh, some of the folks, although it's been basically spontaneous, uh, to go to these uh, town hall meetings and to object to what they've been hearing out of Washington. First of all, my immediate right is Tanya Bashand. She is with... Uh, Tea Party Patriots is one of the groups. And on my far right, uh, Bob McGuffey. Uh, Bob is also heading up a group called Rights uh, Principles. And I thank you so much for being with us on our program. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having us. Bob, let me just start with you. And uh, uh, I, I mentioned the fact that, uh, for all intents and purposes, this has been a spontaneous uh, outgrowth all across the country of what's going on in terms of the administration and health care. Absolutely. I mean, I believe it's organic power, coast to coast. It's from the bottom up. Um, and I think our political class is used to uh, top-down, direct command and control activity, and they don't know how to deal with uh, spontaneous, organic power from the, from the bottom up. It's grassroots. Uh, there are thousands of grassroots groups, uh, coast to coast, uh, similar to ours, um, that have been formed by solid citizens that just object to well, what they see as a socialist agenda being promulgated by our national leadership. What do you see, Tanya, uh, in response to that? Uh, you talked about a meeting the other day, a town hall meeting at uh, West Hartford Town Hall. The opposition coming in? Uh, yes. I mean, I think that for the first three weeks of August, they may have been caught a little flat-footed. I don't think they expected this outpouring of, uh, of passionate opposition to health care. Uh, and in the last week, we've seen um, the groups, the AFL-CIO, the SCIU, ResistNet, um, bringing their folks to the town halls in support of the public option. And uh, they bring their pre-printed uh, signs, and they bus them in. And I've seen the buses. I've, I have video of these people getting off the buses, so we know that they bus them in. Um, and, you know, they shout loudly and we shout loudly and, and we sort of go back and forth and, you know, that, that's what makes this country great is they can shout loudly at the top of their lungs and so can we and we can all shake hands at the end of the day and, and, uh, and go about our business. Bob, what's the uh, main objection? Maybe there's more than one, I'm sure, to the uh, health care plan we're hearing about. Oh, I think it's uh, clearly the government option, the so-called public option. Um, anybody that knows how business uh, works knows that if you have an option that is subsidized by the government, the government can drive the price of that option down and down until the other free market competitors can't compete and they're going to have to withdraw from the marketplace. And we really see it as, uh, as the first stage in uh, tilting the whole playing field towards a uh, government control, the single payer. And uh, the president's on record. Uh, saying that he wanted to have a single-payer system two years ago. He's, he's on record with that, and uh, we believe that's exactly where uh, this, this is intended to head. What do you think, uh, Tanya, happens to health care? I mean, we hear the proponents of the plan saying that, look, if you have a, uh, if you have a, a plan that you're very, very happy with, don't worry about it. You're going to be able to keep that plan. This is nothing more than getting health care to people who either can afford it or don't have it or have very bad plans. I think that they need to read the, the bill uh, because that's not what the bill says. H.R. 3200 has a provision in there that technically if you, are, if you have health insurance now and you keep your job, and can you keep your insurance? Yes. But if you move or if you don't have it, you are going to be forced into the public plan uh, because you're not allowed to, uh, to get other in private insurance. It's right there in the bill. So I think that they need to read their own bill. Now, there's a couple of different versions of it. I think there's three in the House and one in the Senate. So who knows how it's ultimately going to end up. Um, but th they're incorrect when they say that, because ultimately, everyone's going to be uh, forced into it. Bob, what impact do you think that you've had? I mean, lawmakers, I don't know if we're changing any minds one way or the other on this uh, with these town hall meetings. But uh, have you been able to assess the impact, at least at this particular point? Well, I think when you look across the country, uh, this political class is not used to the people standing up and pushing back at them. And a lot of truth has been said in these town halls as you look across the country. There's been some powerful statements by regular people. And then when they go, when those representatives go back and go back to their caucus, they, they're going to know they heard from people. They, they, they're too used to and they're too accustomed to an easy time where they stage these town halls and they, they fill them with their supporters and they get good sound bites and they get good video 
uh, for their campaigns and they make the community think that everything is just fine and everybody agrees with them and that is not the case and I think this season we've come out all across the country to show them there's a significant portion of this country that does not believe in the agenda being put forth by these people. Tanya, what's um What's the status of, of everything right now in terms of the legislation? I mean, has it even been written yet? Do we know what's in there? Do lawmakers know what's in there? I mean, what's going on with this thing? I don't know. I mean, I know that there are three bills in the House that, um, that came out of the various committees. I, I, I've heard rumor that there's an actual written Senate bill, although I haven't seen it. I haven't been able to obtain a copy of it. It's not to say it's not out there. I've just you know, I've been busy. Um, so who knows? And with the president's speech on uh, Wednesday, all bets are off. We have no idea what he's going to say. Um, some are saying that he's going to stick to his guns. Some are saying that, well, we need to get everyone together and start over. But we just don't know. Uh, well, whatever it is, however, my, my particular contention is that any federal government meddling in health care is unconstitutional. It, it runs afoul of the enumerated powers clause and the Tenth Amendment. I want to thank you both. Time goes by too quickly. Uh, Tanya Bashan, thank you very much. Bob thank McGuffin, you. thank you for being with us on our program, and we'll be following you during the course of this debate for sure. Thanks for having us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Back with part three in Connecticut Newsmakers in a moment.